And we're back again, folks. Back for another episode of Off Grid Living with David Knoll and Elmer, right here, hanging out with me today. Um, so today, the last video I showed, um, I believe was on, uh, was on the garden. One of my last videos I showed on building the garden. Now, there's something else I have to do. I have to have a place to get my starter seeds going. Uh, I have nowhere. I don't have a greenhouse here yet. I have nothing, uh, nothing prepared really inside. Uh, to uh, set a few hundred plants starter plants out in a window or anything so kind of came up with this uh, this idea off of a whim I'm gonna build a teepee and I'm gonna cellophane wrap the whole thing to the top uh, it's gonna allow a lot of transparency for my plants to get that natural light and there'll be a hole in, a in the roof for uh, the gases and and the excessive moisture to escape built a lot of teepees in the past well not a lot a few I guess for survival shelters when I'm out hunting or if I want to spend the night in the rain or snow or whatnot and so this is a this is a greenhouse building video it's going to uh, I'm going to also emphasize a couple other things in it um, like the teepee building which I think is an amazing survival shelter it's really easy um, it's a lot of fun to build and one person can do it so we're going to focus on the teepee for the greenhouse we're also going to focus on some lashing um, and how to get a, a greenhouse up and started or a teepee up and started. So basically the first step that I did is I went out and I got, as of now, seven really nice semi-straight poplars. Um, I, depending on the size you want your, uh, your teepee, it's going to depend on the size of your logs and how far you want them spaced out, how high you want your teepee, how much space you need. Uh, preferably if I'm in the snow or I'm in a big snowstorm or I want my teepee to last all winter, I'll make it, uh, make it higher and skinnier so that I know the snow's gonna run off when I'm not there. Um, and then what I wanna do is, so I harvested these seven so far. I might do another three. It just depends on how big my gaps are when I start wrapping that cellophane around or you start wrapping a tarp around. You don't want big pushy pockets in there. So you might have to add, uh, add a few more in there as well. So what I've got cooking now are these three here. These three are gonna be my starters. Um, you want your starters to be as straight as possible, not too heavy because you're going to have to lift all three of these babies at the same time. And when you lay them out, that's the bottom right there. I'm going to be lashing the tops together right here. But the bottom, you want it in about the center of where you're, you're going to want the center of that TP to be. So that when you raise this up, you don't have to do a whole lot of walking around with those poles. The more you walk around with those poles, the more tendency you have to loosen or snap the lashings that you have up top. And it's a real pain in the butt. You're better just to get it right the first time, be able to put it up easily, and then start moving around. Now, the reason we start with three is because we're gonna get it up and you'll have two sitting on their own. You'll bring the one out and then you'll walk back in, grab the other one so you have a tripod. So it's not going to fall over on you while you're trying to get another piece up. You can basically do everything from the one area that you're working. So we're gonna get started. I'm really excited once again about this. This is uh, a little bit of a mix of off-grid living and bushcrafting, which I love. I'm going to do a little bit of uh, the lashing technique that I use. I'm going to do a bit of a shout out to a guy that I follow on YouTube. His name is Dan Wallet, I believe. I hope I'm not saying that wrong. Um, but he has a YouTube channel called uh, Cold Cracker Bushcraft. And this guy's amazing. This guy is a survival skill teacher. He's a bushcraft teacher. Um, instructor and I follow this guy regularly he really helps me out I don't like to have a thousand ways to do one thing and I like that Dan he probably knows a thousand things to do one thing but the ones that he shows and that I see on his channel are the one that I need in my toolbox that when I'm out there or I'm doing something I know that I'm gonna be doing it the right way because I know that uh, Dan Mollette was the one that showed me really good shout out to Dan I just wanted to say that his channel is awesome very informative and very real and very honest so um, I draw a lot of creativity from Dan and uh, a lot of inspiration he's a uh, runs a good channel for sure I think it's awesome so we're gonna get started I'm gonna put this down set up the camera show you the lashings and then we'll get the poles up okay let's lash them up okay guys and gals this process takes a few minutes process takes a few minutes I built myself a little dead grass pillow to rest my knee on um, so basically what I've done so you're gonna line up your logs so they're all basically flush you want all your logs about the same length 
Now I have a piece, I didn't have much uh, rope around the homestead. I had two kinds. I had this marine rope and I had this uh, baler twine. Not ideal, a paracord would have been a lot better, but it's what I have and I wanna get this job done. And going into stores right now is not a lot of fun. So let's get to it. So I've tied this on to one, one tree. I'm gonna wrap it around. Wrap. Now this rope, this twine isn't very strong. And I don't want it snapping off on me once I get it up. Once I'm trying to get it up there. So I'm gonna wrap it five times. Like this. And I'm leaving about a foot of exposed wood on the top here to be able to uh, use as a crutch to put my other logs up for the TP uh, application. Okay, so I'm lashed in. Come around like this. There's the tricky part. Reach under. Grab your rope. So I have to make so many loops with it because I know it's going to snap. But when you're in the bush, sometimes you just have what you have. You have to make do. And today, I have baler twine. Snug as a bug in a rug. One more time. Put it down under. Put it back up. Pull it back up. Now I have a really good... A really good cinch on that. Almost playing in the puddles. Okay. That lashing's feeling very nice. Put your other log in. If you have any curvatures in your logs, try and get them to uh, face the same way. Somewhat. these two together. I hope this greenhouse works. I think it's gonna be nice. I've seen the cellophane wrapped uh, survival shelters before. Even a cool 
a program on a guy putting a hot, uh, putting a stove in it, making it a hot tent, which I thought was kind of neat. Doing some winter camping. I think they're hunting. It's pretty awesome. Okay, here we go. Now, gotta wedge that through. That's a tight fit. Give up hope. Keep moving forward. Now you're up. Keep on trucking. Try to not pinch it through that anymore because I think that's what's cutting it. Every time I pinch it through that top tree or log, it messes it up. It's minor twist. Getting tight. Sinking in the mud here, folks. Let's do another one. Let's do another one. Why wouldn't you? Okay. you're finding but you're making a mess making a mess guy <laughs> tie it off there you have it this baby's ready to go up let's try it out Welcome back guys and gals. Hello. We're back here now. I added four poles to the teepee, make it a little more sound. And then I add another one in the center. 
So it's looking awesome. There's 11 poles. Um, now, I know this is the simple part, mainly other than the labor, trying to get the, the wood up and get everything up. But often where people get stuck is how do I get the sheeting up and around this thing? So what you do, what I've learned anyway, the easiest way for me, and I think many, many Inuit and indigenous was, oof, it's gonna be hard to keep up. Is you take this twine or your rope, tie it around your tree, top of your tree. I hope you can see this. And then you lash it to whatever you're covering. I mean, they would use hide. We use tarps nowadays. But yeah, so basically you would just lash this. This is your last pole you're putting up, I must say too. It's your last pole. So all you're gonna do is lash this on, tie it on. Somehow. Boom, that's tied on. And you're gonna come over to the other side of your sheet, whatever sheet you're putting up. A hole in it right now, so I'll just cut a little bit. Of, I'll cut a hole. I'm not sheeting this, not with uh, standard tarp. I'm going to try the cellophane just because I think it'll be it'll be super fun. Oh, it's getting windy. I think it'll be super fun. So take your rope. Back in the day, they would have had strips of hide and that sort of thing. Place a hole in the top and tie this rope on and then this rope's just going to hang down. I'll set the camera back up a little further away so you can see what I'm going to do now. But uh, that's how you get the sheeting up. Okay. Be right back. Stay tuned. Sheeting the teepee. Okay guys and gals, this is how you do it. This is my last piece to go up. It's tied on the tarp here. Bring this piece up to wherever it's going to go. survival shelter super hard to eat uh, something of this size so now you can see so you generally have you start at the bottom if you had two pieces so the water would repel off of it just like your shingles and then wherever you are just tie it down like this that'll hold that there and then tie this end down as well to your closest support and then you would just keep wrapping um, you'd want a piece that's going to be big. I like to use ones that are just going to cover it in one swap. Uh, then you're adding more logs, trying to shimmy it around. But that's the simplest way to, to do that. Also, some people like to tie the tops of their teepees. You would do the exact same thing, except for putting a tarp on the end. All you would do was take the piece, this one here, you tie a rope and let it hang like really far. And then you would just walk around the teepee. Walk, walk, walk. You might have to have a pusher stick to keep the rope up high. And then you would just walk and lash and lash and lash and lash that teepee together as much as you possibly could uh, to keep it stable. But this is a good stable teepee. Uh, that was just for kind of an informative thing. So I know when I built my first one, I was sitting in the bush and I was like, how am I going to, uh, I'm going to get this thing sheeted, get it wrapped. That's how. Works awesome. 
Okay, get back to it. I'm gonna start the uh, I'm gonna start the cellophane on this baby. Okay, hold on. <laughs> 